Using ChatGPT is the worst way to learn Blender Python if you don't use it correctly. It is truly a balance that you must get right to learn as fast as possible. And in this video, I wanna set you up for success. Learning how to learn has been a hobby of mine for nearly a decade. I've consumed a lot of courses, videos, and books on the subject. And using that knowledge, I've highlighted three things that you need to do to use ChatGPT correctly, and three things you need to watch out for when using ChatGPT. I also have sprinkled some tips and tricks, so make sure to stick around to not miss anything. Reading blog posts and watching random Blender Python YouTube videos won't get you far in learning Python. Learning by doing is the cornerstone of efficient learning. And with ChatGPT, you should select an aspect of Blender that you want to automate or improve and ask it the following. As a highly skilled tech artist with two decades of Python programming experience, you possess a wealth of knowledge to share. We are looking to inspire artists who are new to the world of Blender's Python API. Can you propose five beginner friendly project ideas? centered around a given topic. For each idea, please outline the basic steps involved and include a simple example script. These scripts should serve as starting points, helping newcomers understand Blender scripting capabilities and how they can start automating and customizing their workflows. Your suggestions should cater to novices, so please ensure explanations are clear and the scripts are straightforward, focusing on the fundamental concepts. You can see that we have defined in the beginning who ChatGPT should act as, and in this particular case, it's a tech artist with two decades of experience programming Python. The next thing we give ChatGPT the task of giving us ideas for automating or writing scripts for a particular topic. Here you can add anything that is interesting you, for example, grease pencil automation or something like that. And then finally, we give it more instructions about the format in which you want to receive the answer. This particular prompt should give you some good results in terms of ideas. Now, you got to remember that ChatGPT doesn't know everything about Blender, and you might find that there might be some topics that it won't give you good results. And if that's the case, you should try something a bit more general, like for example, organizing objects in the outliner or applying modifiers to meshes. Remember that you have to start small and not overwhelm yourself. For example, if you want to improve hard surface modeling, don't ask ChatGPT to implement something similar to the HardOps add-on. Start small and ask it to help you understand basic mesh editing using Python. Here's a quick tip. If you want to start tackling bigger projects, ask ChatGPT to help you break down the functionality of that bigger project into something manageable so you can finish. Here's an example prompt that you can use to break that project down. Notice at the beginning, again, I'm setting who ChatGPT should act as. Then I'm telling it that we're going to be doing a Blender add-on that is tailored to a particular topic, and then I need to describe what that add-on should do. Then I give ChatGPT more instructions, so your mission is to de deconstruct the development process of this add-on, focusing first on the core functionality before integrating it into Blender as an add-on. This is key because each time that I've tried ChatGPT, it would start working on creating the outline for the add-on. And in my personal opinion, you should not do that. You should focus first on the basic functionality, getting a simple script working without any UI. So the core functionality should start working before you add any UI elements or any panels. This is super important so you don't get overwhelmed and you're focused on what actually matters. And after this prompt, if it, ge it doesn't generate the add-on code, you can follow up with please help set up the add-on and add the functionality that we just went over into that add-on. By the way, if you have ChatGPT+, Plus, I've created a ChatGPT plugin that should help you with some of these prompts. It's called Blender Python Mentor. You'll see the icon similar to what this channel is and underneath you'll see cgpython.com. I'm still experimenting with this plugin and especially with some more advanced features. And if you ever try it, please let me know in the comments. Next is something you need to watch out for. ChatGPT creates these nice code examples and right above the code, you can see that there's a copy code button. It is super convenient to hit that button and just go into Blender and paste that code into the scripting editor. Well, that convenient copy code button is actually a trap for your progress. It is crucial that you don't just copy paste the code into Blender, but actually start typing out everything that ChatGPT generates. This will help you start building the muscle memory to create these scripts in the first place. Just as you have mastered sending direct messages to your friends and family, this should be similar. Writing instructions into Python should become second nature and you won't get there by just copy pasting code. I hope I convinced you that typing in the code by yourself is a great idea to start building that muscle memory, but you might run into a problem where when you're typing, you're not really understanding what you're typing. 
Some of the code makes sense, but the other parts are just plain gibberish. And this is where ChatGPT can come in and help you. You should ask ChatGPT to comment every single line so you can understand what it's doing. And here's an example of a prompt that you can use to do that. Again, at the beginning, we're telling ChatGPT what it should act as. Next, we're just going, today we're diving into Blender Python, a powerful tool for artists venturing into coding. Let's break down a piece of Blender Python code, focusing on each line. As we go through it, highlight fundamental Python concepts and key features of the Blender Python API using simple terms, explain their significance in creating Blender projects, and how mastering these elements can empower artists to bring their visions to life digitally. Your insights will make these technical aspects accessible to artists who are just starting their journey within Blender. So again, let's break down this prompt. We're telling ChatGPT what it should act as, then we're giving it instructions, telling it to comment the lines that we've written, and then we'll also ask some additional instructions for it to highlight important Python concepts and important Blender Python API concepts so you can start building those key terms and understanding how things relate to each other. With this, you will start building the skill of reading someone else's code. And it doesn't really even have to be someone else's code. You can come back to a project that you were working on after a month or two and not really understand from first glance what it's actually doing. So you'll need to read through it again to see where you left off. And this is really common to spend some time reading the code and understanding what it's doing and then diving into what actually you want to do and finding a place in the code that you want to modify. Reading code is almost as important as writing your own code. So this ChatGPT use case will help you jumpstart your code reading skills. And here's a tip. If some of these concepts that ChatGPT will be bringing up to you won't be making any sense, you can ask it to give you some good analogies of those concepts. And here's a prompt that can help you achieve just that. So imagine you're a Python tutor renowned for making complex concepts accessible. Your task is to draw creative analogies to explaining a particular topic in a way that is easy to understand for someone who's new to the subject. Think about common experiences or objects that can mirror the principles of your particular topic, helping demystify the topic and make it relatable. Please share your analogy and a brief description of how it parallels the key aspects of your particular topic. Another thing you need to watch out for when ChatGPT is creating code for you is the thought, wow, I understand every line. One problem with this thought is you might be falling for the illusion of competence. To test if you're falling for this illusion of competence, minimize the browser that has ChatGPT in it with the code that you understood every single line of, and then try to reproduce it in Blender's scripting editor and see how far you get. You might notice that some parts of the code you're easily able to reproduce, but the other parts you still don't fully grasp. And that is where the illusion of competence is going to be tricking you to thinking that, hey, I understand everything. Since you're looking at the code and reading it, everything makes sense. But as soon as you close the tab, it starts falling apart. And the parts where it starts falling apart, you should pay attention. Those are the parts that you really need to dig deep and understand. As a quick tip, I highly recommend using ChatGPT to practicing recall. For example, if you think that you have mastered a particular topic, you should ask ChatGPT to generate some questions for you to really understand how well you understand that particular subject. Here's an example prompt. In the beginning, we're setting up what ChatGPT should act as, and the interesting part starts here. You're interested in evaluating the Python proficiency of artists who are beginning to explore Python through Blender. Your aim is to ensure they have a solid understanding of Python core concepts. Could you outline the fundamental concept? Could you? Uh, can you outline the fundamental concepts and principles of your particular topic that are crucial for beginners, especially those coming from a Blender background? Additionally, could you provide a set of questions that effectively gauge the knowledge in these areas? This is a great prompt to uncover how well you really understand something. By the way, I had a lot more tips and tricks for you, but they didn't make it into this video because they didn't really fit into the flow. So I put them into a separate PDF document with the tips from this current video and I sent it out to my newsletter subscribers. They've already received it. And if you want to receive that same document, I would highly recommend you subscribe using the link down below. And as soon as you do that, I'll send the document over. The next ChatGPT use case is about something that you'll be facing from day one when you'll start with Python. And even after you've gained a lot of experience, you'll still face these challenges. I'm talking about dealing with errors. Understanding what is wrong in your script or add-on is super crucial for you to quickly 
fix the issues at hand. This is why understanding what an error means is very important. The quicker you can understand what an error means, the faster you can fix it and move on to something more interesting. When you get stumped by an error that your script or add-on throws at you, you can ask ChatGPT to explain what this error means. For example, here's a prompt that you can use. Imagine you're an expert Blender Python scripting tutor with extensive experience troubleshooting and solving coding issues. I've encountered a Python error within Blender that has stopped me. Could you please provide a detailed explanation of the following error message? Also, I would appreciate any guidance on steps or strategies to resolve this issue effectively. The error message is as follows, and then you paste in the error message that you'll see in your system console. This prompt should give you good results and explain what actually is going on in this error. Something that you need to watch out for is that ChatGPT's knowledge base is not always up to date in some parts of Blender Python, and it might give you some strategies that won't work. But the explanation of what the error means should be pretty accurate. A quick tip here is don't just tell ChatGPT to explain you the error, ask it to teach you how to read errors. For example, you can use this prompt, you're a world-class Blender Python tutor, please teach me how to read this error correctly. And it should explain how you should read errors. You should master this to really level up your Python game. The final point I wanna make is probably the most important and the most dangerous thing that you should watch out for in your learning journey with ChatGPT. And that is learning happens only when you step out of your comfort zone and into something called the desirable difficulty. This is all about picking the right difficulty level for your learning tasks. You should pick the challenges that are tough but not too tough and challenges that are not too easy. The more that you stick with these desirable difficulty tasks, the faster you will progress. The issue that you will run into when using ChatGPT is ChatGPT is something that you would use to lower the difficulty. A correct way to use ChatGPT is lowering the difficulty from something that is impossible to a desirable difficulty. Now, you need to be careful to not lower it too much. For example, if you're already on a desirable difficulty, but you're just being a bit lazy, but don't really wanna do the mental work, you can go straight away to ChatGPT and get the answer, lowering the difficulty in some, into something moderate, or maybe even lowering it to your comfort zone. And if you're constantly lowering it to your comfort zone, it's gonna take forever for you to learn anything with ChatGPT. A similar analogy is like going to the gym. As soon as you start sweating in the gym, you don't reduce the speed on your treadmill or get a lighter weight. You continue to push through to get that endurance or muscle mass, right? You don't just give up and go home. The same thing goes with learning. Learning is not an easy process and you have to balance on the edge of desirable difficulty and something that's impossible for you to get the maximum learning efficiency. So to use ChatGPT correctly, you should at least try to solve a problem that you're having for for 20 to 30 minutes, not going to ChatGPT. But if you're noticing you're asking similar questions, you might wanna increase the time you wait before using ChatGPT. Don't let ChatGPT replace your brain. ChatGPT is an amazing tool for learning when used correctly. Now, there's one more tool that will help you understand how the code works and flows. And in this video right here, I'll explain how to use it.